Hello, my friends. May God bless you all and bless you with His Word. His Word is enough to bless any person, whether or not that person deserves, they can be blessed just because of the Word. And why is that? Well, let me tell you something. The Word of God is not like the Word of man. Even though people consider the Word of man more than the Word of God, but still, the Word of God is not like the Word of man. Man fail. Men say many silly things. All of us. All of us fail with our words. But the word of God does not fail. It is perfect. It goes straight to the point. It meets any person's need, whether good or evil. The word of God goes to those who are thirsty for what is righteous because the word is, is perfect, it's righteous. So one of the things that you need to know concerning faith is that when the person believes, when they believe in the word of God, and I say believe, not just to acknowledge that God exists, because many people know God exists, but they don't believe in him. For you to have an idea, to just acknowledge God's existence is like, for example, you like someone and then you start dating that person. You have a relationship with them, but you will only, let's say, commit to that person when you get married, which is to believe. So first you like that person and then you believe in them that they are for you. For example, when I met Esther, I liked her and she liked me, so we dated, we got engaged, and eight months later we got married, which means when we got married, then that was when indeed we believed in one another. We showed that we believed in one another. Well, the Word of God is like this as well. You may acknowledge that the Word exists and it's good, but if you don't believe, if you don't base your life upon that Word, then your faith is going to be emotional and superficial, natural. And when the Bible speaks of faith, when the Word of God passes faith onto us, it is a supernatural faith. It's something personal. That's it. Sometimes people around you, everyone around you, they just acknowledge the Word of God, but only you believed in it. So only you will receive the blessing. That's how it works. Pay attention. A good example of that is when Jesus met the centurion. The centurion was a commander who had a hundred soldiers under his care, his authority. So this centurion, this commander, he came to Jesus and said the following prayer, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. So that centurion, for sure, was not a righteous person. He was a man of authority, but he was not someone, you, you know how it is. So that centurion, despite of everything and of his sins and all, he was a charitable man because he wanted his servant. He was actually suffering because of the pain of his servant. So he could just get rid of the servant and get someone else, isn't it? But he didn't. He cared about him. 
and he asked Jesus to heal him. So Jesus said, I will come to your house and heal him. What would you do, you who are watching me, what would you do if Jesus right now, right now, would tell you, listen, I'm going to your house and I will give you healing. What would you do? Yes, Lord, please, you would even cook. You prepare the house to receive Jesus, isn't it? But none of this matters. None of this is important. That man, straight away, when Jesus said, I will come to your house and will you heal your servant, the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy. He knew that he was not worthy. I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. But only speak a word. Just that. Just speak a word. How nice. This is so glorious. Speak a word. In other words, just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, when he saw the expression of faith from that centurion, which was not worthy, who did not deserve, he did not deserve anything, but when he manifested this quality of faith, this belief, which is what God is looking for in people, it doesn't matter whether or not they deserve it. So, the text says that Jesus marveled. Jesus was marveled. Oh, my friend, God is marveled when someone believes in his word. That's all. For example, we are speaking here concerning faith. In what? Is it a religious faith? No, it's nothing to do with religion. It has to do with the Word of God. The subject here is the Word of God. Whoever believes in it is saved, and whoever does not believe is already condemned. Whoever believes will be chosen. Whoever does not believe is already condemned. That, that's the reality. That is no more or less, more, more or less, less. This is the reality. Either you believe or not. If you believe, you receive it. If you don't believe, you won't receive it. And you are already condemned. It's what Jesus says. Go throughout the world, preach the gospel, meaning my word, and whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe is already condemned. So, you who watch me right now, and perhaps you are in the position of the paralyzed man, the servant who was dreadfully tormented, dreadfully tormented. He was being tormented by a spirit of suffering, of pain. He was paralyzed. Perhaps you are not paralyzed. Perhaps your body is perfect, but maybe your inner being, your soul is paralyzed. I don't know. Each person knows of themselves. I just know one thing, and that's what I'm here for, to tell people that one word, one word only, coming from God's mouth, saves you. Do you believe in this word? Do you believe that Jesus listens 
through your prayers, your word. It's the word that counts, my friend, not our merits or our flaws and mistakes and problems. No, what counts is the word of God. It is the word of God that cannot return to him void. Not that just can't, it's already determined, it's a decree, it won't return to him void. He said it himself, the words that proceed out of my mouth will not return to me void, but will do as I please. So you who are watching right now, pay attention. I'd like very much to be close to you there where you are to look into your eyes, into your eyes. I'd like to place my hand over your head and to pass on to you the spirit that God has given me. In, in Spiritism, they call it a pass because they pass from one spirit to another. But I would like to pass on to you the Spirit of God. I want it to be there with you, to place my hands over your head and remove every curse, all evil that is tormenting you, my friend. But I don't have to be there. It's not necessary for me to be there because the Word is of God. The Word is of God. Whoever believes in the Word of God receives. You can receive it there right now. You will receive it right now. Because whilst I'm speaking to you, for sure the Holy Spirit is already acting in you. You who are chosen. You who are chosen. It doesn't matter your sexual orientation, it doesn't matter your financial condition, it doesn't matter how wise you are, how much knowledge you have, your life, none of these matters. Your sins, just as the sins of the centurion, his sins were not able to prevent the action of the Holy Spirit in his life which is the Word of God, the Holy Spirit. Spirit is thought, is word. It's the mind of God. So when the person is convinced by the Holy Spirit, the divine Holy Spirit, as the Catholics used to say, when a person is touched by the Holy Spirit, then their life changes. Their life is transformed. You receive healing, but above all things, you receive as well your salvation. And this is what really matters, because it's pointless for you to be healed in your physical body, resolve your physical problems, and not be healed in your soul because your soul is which is suffering. It's your soul that needs healing. If you resolve the problem on the outside, but you don't resolve it on the inside, you are going to continue to suffer. Unfortunately, that's the reality. But the Word of God comes to use your intellect and then conduct your soul, which is your heart, towards a new life. God changes your heart. He transforms your heart. He gives you a new spirit, a new heart. Right there, right now. Do you believe in this? Do you believe it? The centurion believed in the word of Jesus. He believed in the word of Jesus in such a way that he said, Lord, you don't even need to come to my house because I'm not worthy that you come under my roof. But just give one word, just that. And Jesus is sending, the Spirit of our Lord Jesus is sending this word to you right now, right now in this moment. Do you believe? Look, I, I'm so certain of this. 
I have such an assurance, such a conviction that he is speaking to you right now that I'm sure that right now you are already free. Free from this evil in your life. Free from these thoughts that are harmful. This is spirit that is evil and unclean that is telling you in your thoughts, oh, there is no solution for you anymore. Just end your life already. This is the spirit. This is a thought of the devil because he wants you to die and that the news will go around quickly and then he will be grateful because, my friend, he does not want you to listen to the word of God. He does not want you. He hates it when a person gives ear to the voice of God. And that's why I'm hated by a lot of people. That's why there are many people who hate me. But they hate me, poor them. They don't know that inside of them there is a spirit of hatred. The thoughts of prejudice against myself, against the church, and so on. You already know that. But what can we do? The word of God prevails over all these. The word of God remains. Pay attention, just as an example here. We have been preaching the gospel. We've been placing all of our lives, actually, all of our lives in preaching the gospel, which is the word of God, for more than 45 years. I have been believing in Jesus for 59 years. 59 years. I've always suffered persecution since the beginning, but I'm here. And then? Oh, they've done witchcraft against me, you have done that, they took me to court. Here I am, and I will be still here until the day that my Lord will promote me. When he promotes me into his kingdom, thank God, then I will leave this place, abandon this physical body, and I will be together with my Lord. But as long as I'm here, I will preach the word, and whoever believes in it will obviously be blessed, will be healed, will be delivered. But above all, my desire is to heal people's soul. It's not to resolve people's problems. If you want to resolve your problems, all of them receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Word. God is Word. God is Spirit. When you receive the Spirit of the Word, then you become free on the inside. You will stop depending on people and things. You are free. You become free. Because you start to occupy your mind with the thoughts of God, with the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, I'm not here to preach church, to speak of the church or religion. I'm here to speak of the word of my father. He said, he said, my word will not return to me void. And this word is so strong, so powerful, that right now it is delivering you in this very moment. It's delivering you from this disgraceful situation that you are living in. He's delivering your thoughts. God loves you. God is love. But it's not just that. His love is materialized in the lives of those who believe in him. And especially you, 
who have done everything wrong that you can imagine. Everything. There is nothing wrong that you haven't done yet. For example, for the world, for the world we live in, you are the last of all human beings, the worst. You are like perhaps rubbish, rubbish, like rubbish that can't even be recycled. But to God, you are valuable. Oh, if you only knew how valuable you are. He wants to change your life. Just as he has been doing in the lives of the testimonies that we post here. We always post in these testimonies. There are thousands and thousands and thousands, millions of testimonies that we have actually. To post here every day, every day. One different from the other. Testimonies of God's power. Testimonies that show that the word of God does not return to him void. And the word that I sent to you now, be free right now in this moment. Be healed. Be delivered. I don't know the hell you are living in, but this hell, the spirit of hell that is over you, be tied up, rebuked right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive life, receive health, receive the Spirit of God. You who are seeking the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you who are dedicating yourself to receive the Holy Spirit, if you receive the Holy Spirit, or better, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you are going to receive the solution. You will resolve all of your problems because the Spirit of the Lord Jesus is the mind of the Lord Jesus, is the mind of God that will lead your mind, which will lead your heart and will make your body very grateful. Do you understand? When Jesus said, when Jesus heard the word of that centurion, that commander, he said, Lord, I am not worthy Jesus knew that he was not worthy indeed. But when he said, give one word, speak a word, which means that that man who was unworthy, he believed. And just because he believed, he became clean before God. He became righteous before God. He became worthy before God. He became saved before God because Jesus said, not even in Israel I have found such great faith. Not even in his own disciples and apostles did he find such faith as the faith of the centurion. You who perhaps are a soldier, a commander, you who are someone who works in, in the society in that you zeal, for, for the protection of the state of people. God is speaking to you as well, my dear friend. Perhaps you faced or you are facing a very unfair situation in your life. But it doesn't matter. God is with you. Pay attention. God is with you. God is with you. With me, Bishop? Yes. How are you so sure? The Holy Spirit confirms this inside of me. And he confirms there with you, right there. Receive your deliverance. Stop thinking of killing yourself. You can even kill your body, but your soul, which is the one suffering, you cannot kill it. No one can kill the soul. No one. The soul never dies, ever. So receive deliverance. Be free. Receive peace right now. Receive peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive peace. And with peace comes a state of joy of tranquility, of security, of tranquility in your soul, despite of the problems around you. 
God is not going to perform magic, but He gives you peace so that you then can know how to make the right decisions in your life. Be free from this demonic voice. I say this in the name of the Lord Jesus. Be free from the curse of the negative thoughts. Absorb there now what God is giving you right now. Be free there where you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The word is of God in the name of the Son of God. Because the word is the Spirit of God live to those who believe. Do you believe, my friend? So I'll do the following. Let's do the following. If, if by any chance you believe, then place your hand over your device there now. And we are going to unite our faith here. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, receive right there what God has given me. The spirit of deliverance the spirit of life, of good health, the spirit of God. I place my head here on this video as if I was gluing my head to yours and passing on to you of what is in me to you right now. If you believe, then do that. Unite your, your phone. Put that Put your phone on your forehead. Put your forehead on mine. And be free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My Father, confirm your word here, right now. And show this person that your word is the same. Just as they were sent. And these words healed the servant of the centurion who was dreadfully tormented and paralyzed. May this word, my Lord, this spirit will penetrate the body of this person, each cell from the top of this person's head to the sole of their feet and deliver them from this hell they are in. Let them be free, literally free, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And thank God. That's it. Thank God. May God bless you all. And tomorrow, which, by the way, is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, isn't it? Then go to a universal church tomorrow. Or go to your church. Or anywhere, but go. Not anywhere, but a place of faith to receive the Holy Spirit here in the Temple of Solomon in the morning at 7 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. and at 6 p.m. And the following Sunday, I will be at 6 p.m. with you in the Temple of Solomon. May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.